Hi, for this video what I want to do is show you how to find a Z interval for the mean using class calc. I am going to go through all of the process steps just in case you do need to show all of the work. I know that a lot of professors or teachers require that you show all of the work with the formulas and everything, including the conditions, so I'm going to go through all of that. If you are looking for just finding the answer, feel free to fast forward through the video to find uh, when I'm actually using the class calc just to get the answer. So what we have here is in 40 randomly selected seawater samples, the mean sodium chloride concentration was 23 cubic centimeters per cubic meter. The population standard deviation is known to be 6.7 cubic centimeters per cubic meter, and we're going to construct a 90% confidence interval for the concentration of sodium chloride in seawater. So the first thing that you want to do is check your conditions. The conditions are what tell you if you can use this formula or not. So there are three conditions that are used for the Z interval. And I would reference your textbook because sometimes the conditions are slightly different in different texts. So the first thing that you need to have, and it doesn't have to be in any certain order, just make sure that you have them all, is you want to make sure that you have random sampling. So it tells us that there was randomly selected seawater. So we know that it is randomly selected, so that meets the first condition of having to have randomization. The second condition is one of two things has to be met. Either your sample size has to be greater than or equal to 30, or it has to be normally distributed. So one of, one of these two conditions has to be met. So if we look through here, we can see that our sample size is 40. And so we do have the first condition met. So we can say that our sample size is greater than or equal to 30 since n is 40. So that condition is met. The third one, which tells us whether we're going to use the Z interval for the mean or the T interval for the mean, is what kind of standard deviation do you know? If you know the population standard deviation, then you're going to use Z. If you know the sample standard deviation, then you're going to use T. So for this one, since we do know the population standard deviation, we can say that sigma is known to be 6.7, okay? So sigma, remember, is the symbol for population standard deviation. If it said sample standard deviation, then you would use the T interval. All right, so now we need to find our important information. The things that we need to know in order to use the formula are the sample mean, and it tells us that our sample mean is 23 cubic centimeters per cubic meter. Okay, we need to know our standard deviation, which is 6.7. We need to know our sample size, and then we need to find our critical value. It could be ZC or Z star, depending upon um, your text. They may have a different notation. It's just the Z-score that corresponds to 90% of the area in between. Okay, so if you are using class calc and you have to show out all the work, um, it might be easier to actually grab a normal table or a T table to be able to find that, but in this video I'm going to show you how to find that using class calc. So if you remember, a 90% confidence interval is basically trying to tell us what are the Z scores that correspond to having 90% of the area in between. So in your course previously, you should have seen something where it said find the Z scores that correspond to an area between of 90%. So what's going to happen is we know 100% of our area has to fall under the curve. So between these two sides here, we know that that can be found by doing 100% minus 90% or 10%. Since it's symmetric, half of the area is going to be down here. So half of one minus the area between is going to be down here. So if I take half of 10%, that would be 0 0.05. So I'm going to find the negative z-score. With the critical value, we're always going to report 
the positive z-score or the absolute value of your z that you find. Okay, um, so we're just basically looking at our distance from the mean in both directions. So I'm going to grab the calculator and what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to stat the distribution plots and I'm going to use a normal distribution. Since I'm looking for a z-score, the mean is always zero and the standard deviation is one. Uh, if you notice, our graph does show us what it looks like if we needed to look at or look at what the normal curve looks like. And we're looking for 90% of the area in between. So anytime you're trying to find the z-scores, you want to use the inverse CDF. And we're going to use that 0 0.05. Um, I could have also typed in 1 half of one minus the area between if I wanted to it's going to give me the same answer it's just a matter of which one's easier for you to type in whether you want to do the math in your head first and plug in that value or whether you want to just put in the one half one minus the area between on this one typically we round to two decimal places with z-scores unless that third decimal place would round to a five either it is a five or it would round to a five so on this one I know that we are going to use um, three decimal places with this because it's a special case where it's exactly in the middle between 1.64 and 1.65 so if you were using a table it would be exactly in the middle Okay, so with this one, we are going to use three decimal places. Again, this is if you are required to show all the work. If you just need the answers, I do have that down in just a minute. Okay, um, I put the positive value even though the calculator gave me a negative because I looked up the negative z-score. And that's just because your critical values, uh, we just report the positive one. Okay, so the formula, and you can separate this out. Um, I just write it together. We're going to take our sample mean plus or minus our ZC times sigma divided by the square root of n. So I would just plug in all my values. So if you need to show the work, this would be showing the work. You would take your 23 plus or minus your 1.645 times 6.7 divided by the square root of 40. So what we can do instead of having to plug both this expression into our calculator and getting a rounded version because the 1.645 we saw was already rounded, we had to round that value. Um, what we can do is we can go into our class calc and if we go into stat and tests, it will pull up all of the most commonly used t or intervals and tests. So this one is known as the Z interval. Um, it's really the Z interval for the mean because we're talking about a population mean that we're trying to predict. And so I'm going to just choose the Z interval. The sigma, we're just going to plug that in. Remember that we found that that was 6.7. That's the population standard deviation. X bar is 23 n is 40 and our confidence level is 0.9 so our confidence level is 0.9 and if you notice it gives us the answer to the lower endpoint and the upper endpoint so what it did was it took the 23 and it subtracted the 1.645 times the standard deviation divided by the square root of n and to get this one it added Okay. Um, the margin of error, just in case they do ask you for the margin of error, this right here is the margin of error. That is the value that's being added or subtracted. That's this part right here. If I plugged that into a calculator, that would give me the margin of error. And I do like the fact that class calc does include that in the answer. So then all I would have to do is write down my answer, the 21.257, round to however many decimal places it tells you in the problem. Um, I'm going to go ahead and put down three. I always tend to do more decimal places than is what is typically asked for. Um, but you can round it to whatever they tell you to. So if they say round to the nearest tenth, I would stop at one decimal place. Um, nearest hundredth is two. I rounded to the nearest thousandth. 
So one of the most important things in confidence intervals is interpreting your decision in the context of the original problem. So when you're interpreting, you're always going to start with whatever level of confidence you used. So with 90% confidence, and you can say the population mean, typically I leave out the word population. The one thing that you never, ever, ever want to say in your interpretation is the sample mean. Never write the sample mean, and that's because we know the sample mean is in the middle because that was the midpoint. Okay, so we're trying to make a prediction about the population mean based on our sample. So with 90% confidence, the population mean, or you could just say the mean concentration of sodium chloride is between, and then you would just put the interval values in here. I always include the values because when you're interpreting, you're telling the world what you found. So you're telling someone else what your findings were. So with 90% confidence, the mean concentration of sodium chloride is between 21.258 and 24.742 cubic centimeters per meter. Sorry, per cubic meter. So make sure that when you are interpreting that you do include the context because it's very important to have that context in your interpretation. As always, thanks for watching. If you have any questions, please let me know. If there are additional topics that you would like me to cover, please let me know that as well.